This is another in the series of videos from the Voyager Middle School Robotics Classroom. You can check out our other video tutorials for more projects about 3D printing, programming, electronics, and robots. Uh, today what we're going to work on is we're going to work on uh, making a bobblehead. So I'm assuming that you watched our previous video on how to clean a 3D scan or you have some other file that you'd like to make a bobblehead out of. Um, here's a pretty clean 3D scan. You can see there's still holes in the feet. I usually like to close those last. Um, there might be a couple other problems. Let's just look with the inspector. Let's go to analysis and choose inspector. You can see that there's, you know, about uh, 10 problems here. And I'm going to just hit auto repair all. But I'm also going to switch this to smooth fill. And I usually use flat fill in the inspector. But I'm going to use smooth fill right here. And maybe it'll make sense why in a minute. Um, you'll see that instead of putting in the minimum amount of fill, it kind of balloons out the bottoms of the feet. And the reason that I'm doing that is I'm about to prepare this for printing and I want to make sure I can get a nice clean flat edge to print on and if I'm gonna print this figure just to stand on its own um, I can do that by going to edit and choosing plane cut. Plane cut slices the figure um, at a plane and you can rotate that plane or move that plane oops let me back that up move that plane by dragging these arrows or flip which part you're keeping this way you can also switch to slice and that will leave both parts in the model and just separate them at that line um, but if you choose cut you can choose um, which kind of fill you want uh, I usually use this one right here if I'm going to want to hit filled in or I sometimes do no fill if I want to be able to see on the inside of the object still um, so in this case we're going to fill it in and we are going to slice right at the bottom of the feet so you want to orbit so you can see sort of a straight on view and then just draw a line slicing where the bottom of the feet will be. And I kind of like this view right here because it shows you exactly what's being cut off. So that kind of helps you see exactly which part is um, all the way down. And then when I like that, and I like what I got there, I'm just going to push this arrow. And you can see what's being left behind. Um, this is, you can see it's not filling in here, so it must have a problem with some of the edge here. But as I move up and down here, it'll fill or not fill. Um, and I want that to be filled in. I want to wa watch and make sure I'm not getting rid of too much of the foot on either foot either. So it's a little bit of a balance. If it doesn't fill in, you can always try and fill it in later with a flat fill. But that looks like maybe what I want. And so I'm going to hit accept. And it's always a good idea to align right after you did that. Because you can align the last plane, that was the plane that we just cut on, to the Y axis. And that will make it so that your model is up and down. So I'm going to just do that. Sometimes it ends up being 180 degrees out of sync. It's hard to tell which way is up exactly. But it's easy to rotate something 180 degrees. So now he's flat, feet on the ground. That's a flat surface. It's a good place to get started with a 3D print. So before I move on to 3D printing, I do want to figure out vaguely what size I want this figure to be. Um, I use rulers for this, calipers. Sometimes I have my students make uh, a really, really rough little blob of Play-Doh that is the size that they want it to be. And then I have them actually measure that with a ruler or calipers. And then you're going to put those in in millimeters. And the way you do that is you go to analysis and go to units and scale. So you can see um, this is a scan. And so it's scanned in with meters, 1.64 meters, but it turned those into millimeters. So if I was going to print this life size, I would need to multiply this by a thousand. So I'd need to type in something like, if I was, or I could, I could type in um, 1,644. And now that's a life size object. But the problem with that is, um, I, of course I can't 3D print that big. So um, I'm going to figure out how big I want him to be. And um, I'm going to just say for the sake of argument, I want him to be 150 millimeters tall. So I'm going to switch that to 150. All the other measurements will automatically update in millimeters to give you a sense of how big they'll be. You can hit done here. And nothing has changed except its size. Then you can go to print. And if you've done everything right, you can see I've got it 180 degrees upside down. You can just move things around. You can fit to build volume. You can use all these different tools to move, size, rotate. Any one of these tools you pick will pop open this little widget which is the same in, as normally in Mesh Mixer. So I'm going to flip 180 degrees like that. I can also use these buttons here to do 90 degree turns if you can figure out which axes you want to turn around. And so now he's flat on the ground. 
Now, sometimes, depending on how your edits have gone, um, what will happen is the bottom of your model, the mesh mixer will think the bottom of your model was the bottom of the model that you started with. So if you delete a lot of stuff, and you maybe like you're making a bobblehead and you only have the head part, then the problem is it will float a certain distance above this. And the way that I always fix that is I export as a PLY and then re-import. And that will reset the bounding box to the actual object. All right, so we're almost ready to print here, but you can see if you're used to 3D printing, you understand that stuff like this hand will not 3D print because there's nothing underneath it. So we have to scroll down here to where it says add support structure. And when we do that, it'll highlight in blue and color in red the areas that it thinks are overhangs. You can change a lot of the different um, settings to sit, sort of figure out what sort of settings work um, for your printer. And you can also change the settings in terms of which sort of uh, supports will work for your printer. I'm using three millimeter supports right now. That works better for my MakerBot fifth gen. I can get away with two millimeter supports on my MakerBot Replicator 2. I hit support all overhangs. And what it'll do is it will put little things that sort of, and you can see these ones are following the contour of the body, that are going to add um, support underneath those parts that are hanging off. And those are really easy to break off, especially if you have the, uh, the tips set correctly to a very small diameter. They're very easy to break off, uh, much less support than you would need in a lot of other support generating softwares. Um, if you don't like a support, you can control click it and it'll go away. If you, if you want to add an extra support, which I often do for really long unsupported runs, you just click it and it'll add another support in. So, and then you can control click to delete. So that supports in Mesh Mixer and you hit done and then you can just, I use a MakerBot so you can switch which printer you've got here. They have a limited number and you can add and edit printers. Um, and then I can just hit send to Makerware and it will actually open to Makerware. If you're not using Makerware, you can also export or save the scene. And if I choose export, you can export as a .thing file or an STL file. Um, and then you can put it into whatever sort of slicer you want. Um, another thing that's really nice is you can analyze stability and strength here. I haven't got the slicing to really work the way I want it to, but stability, it shows you sort of what the support polygon looks like, where the center of gravity probably will be, and how support stable this is. You can see this is going to be a very narrow thing here, so it's probably going to easily fall over one way or the other. And in terms of strength, it'll color code and show you basically the thin parts, the parts that are going to want to break more than other parts. So that's a basic preparation of a object to 3D print. So let's go into specifically how would I prepare this if I was going to make it a bobblehead. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down because now I know it's upside down. So I'm going to flip it and I'm going to use the select tool. Oops, what happened there? Am I caught up? Let's zoom. Oh, very confusing. Let's back up and see. There we go. All right. So transform, and we're going to rotate 180 degrees. And I'm going to hit accept. There we go. Much better. All right. So now I'm going to use the select tool, because if I'm going to make this a bobblehead, the head's going to be a separate piece, and it's going to be attached by a spring. So I'm going to use the select tool, and I'm going to choose the head. And I want to paint the whole head, and I'm going to orbit around and make sure I get the whole thing. And I'm basically just going to get rid of this whole thing. And so I'm going to make sure I have a pretty good selection, no little gaps in it, make sure I like the border on it, and I'm going to choose Erase and Fill. And that'll basically just get rid of the head. So now I have a headless figure. That's basically what I want. So I hit Accept. Now I'm going to select just a circle on the top here because I find that if I'm, a, if I'm making Maryland Spring especially, I'd like to have a post. And you can choose your post diameter uh, and make it relative to your object. Um, I would like to have a post that I can go straight up with. And so what I can do here is I can smooth this boundary, be on the keyboard, to make a nice clean circle. And then I can choose to extrude this, D on the keyboard. And you can see that this will make a post that goes straight up. Uh, you can see that the end is just exactly what was there, but I can switch that to make it a flat surface. And I can tell it exactly how far to stick up because I've already scaled. These numbers are actual numbers. Um, so I can see how far this would stick up. And that will allow me to put a spring on there. I don't want it to stick up too much. I just want to add a little bit of surface area to glue this spring to. 
I want to make the head big enough or the hole big enough to cover this. So I'm almost done with my body now. I've got a nice um, post instead of a head. But the other thing about a bobblehead, we saw in the support polygon that it's very small. And if I add a giant head to it, it's going to likely tip over. So how do I add a platform here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to import a plane. And that's just a flat surface. But instead of replacing this model, which is what I would do if I was starting something new, I'm going to choose to append this model. And that'll make it so I have two objects, the plane and my, my mesh. So I'm going to take the plane and I'm going to transform it with T on the keyboard and I'm going to move it down to where I want it. I can also grab these squares here and I can sort of resize it. And if I don't like its angle, I can rotate it around and get it to be where I want the platform. And this is just a flat surface, so I'm going to need to make it a little bit more uh, three-dimensional if I'm going to 3D print it. So after I accept that transformation, I'm going to select the whole thing. So select E to extend. And I'm going to choose extrude, just like I did before, uh, to give it some thickness. Now it's going up. And since, these are, since this is already scaled again, I can choose exactly how thick I really want it to be in reality. I can use a set of calipers and measure and figure out what I actually want for a platform. Okay, hit accept. Now I've got a little bit of a platform. It's a separate object. I can also, um, since I have this selected right now, I can also do this uh, cool trick where I just do a soft transform here and I can shrink the top. I just grab this square in the middle and shrink it down to make it a little bit more interesting, a platform. Um, the soft transform allows that sort of soft transition there, not a really rough one. Uh, hit accept. So now I've got a good platform. If I want to put these two things together, I'm going to select both of them, use the edit menu, and choose Boolean Union. That'll take the two meshes and do a little bit of math and try and figure out how to combine them. If you like the way it's combined with the Boolean Union, you can hit Accept, and it should turn it into one object that is 3D printable. So that's my object. That's how I'd 3D print it. I would add support material, and this would be 3D printed. So that's how you make the body of a bobblehead. To make the head of a bobblehead, let me show you how to do that. Um, let's, I'm going to assume that you have a head scan. Maybe you're using the same scan. Hopefully you saved a separate version. Um, if you're using a long hair, you might want to think about giving yourself a little bit of a trim because the long hair has a tendency to run into the shoulders of the bobblehead and makes the head not bobble that much. So we're going to start with a plain cut and get rid of most of this um, because I really only want the top part. And plus this gives me a, a nice flat bottom surface to 3D print so I'm going to hit accept there. Now to get rid of a little bit more of this, I might want to get rid of a little bit more neck here. What I can do is I can take the sculpt tools and I like to use draw two on the volume brushes and I'm going to hold the control key to dig inwards here and you can see I could dig myself a little bit deeper in here if I wanted to sort of sculpt this neck away. So this is an option right here. I'm not going to go in depth here because you can play around and make it look the way you want it to look. So you can cut things off with the um, plane cut. You can, cut. you can cut things off by sculpting them away. Or you can also use a race fill. I'm going to show you now how to make the hole. So once you get it the way you want it, um, what you're going to want to do is make the hole as big as you possibly can. Leave a little bit for structure but select as big an area as you can. You're going to smooth the boundary like we did before with B, and you're going to extrude like we did before with D, except for this time we want to go up inside the head. So you want to go up inside the head, and you want to make sure you don't poke through the, the top. So one thing I find useful is take this invisible shader here, drag it onto your model, and now you can really see what you're doing. And now you can see I, I, I ran out of slider there, um, but I can use what I've got here, and I can change this number around to see where I want it to be uh, beyond the slider. So I can get it just where I want it to be just by changing these numbers until it's exactly right. I have to exit out of the number to see the changes. That's going to create a cavity that's big enough for to hide the post and the spring. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit accept. And then again, I want to select a smaller area inside this is going to be making a post for the spring to attach to i find this to be a useful thing to do so again i want to extrude and this time i want to go down so i want to go down i don't want this post to show through or get too close to the other post so i want to make sure it's nice and short hit accept now i want to probably see what i'm doing again so i'm going to grab one of these shaders i like these two 
um, and put it back there. This looks pretty good, I'm ready to go. But if you notice, when I did my plane cut, I did not align. So how do I align if I didn't do it when I was supposed to? Well, I don't know what the last plane is in Mesh Mixer's mind. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna scribble along the, the flat surface. Just gonna draw a little bit of a shape, scribble a little bit, and hit accept. And what that will do is that will align that bottom that I just scribbled on to there. It helps define a plane when I scribble like that. Okay, so we're ready to go here. Again, you're gonna wanna change the size. You, this is really, really small, so if I go to print right now, you won't even see it. You wanna make sure that this is exaggerated in size, but not ginormous. So um, I'm gonna make it, these numbers are not exactly numbers I would use, but there you go, you can make a bobblehead. I would estimate the size correctly for yourself. When you go to print, to print this bobblehead, you can see this one's gonna be rather large. Um, maybe I'm printing a really big bobblehead. Uh, you can, add, you're gonna definitely wanna add support structure to help print that post on the inside. You can also hollow out an object and you can set the wall thickness. This is especially good if you're trying to save material or if you're trying to uh, make things lighter, which is a good idea for a bobblehead. So you can see it's very sort of labor intensive for Mesh Mixer and it gives you a little preview and it shows you sort of the double layer effect. And so what that will do, if you print this out, you can print it out 100% infill, and none of that inside will be filled in at all. Um, so I can add a support structure. You can see a little bit here, but there's probably more that I can't see that I could see once I send it to, um, uh, once I send it to my slicing program and slice through. Uh, it's really hard to adjust the, the supports on the inside, but we can adjust the supports on the outside. So that's how you make a bobblehead. You do those things, get yourself some wire, bend yourself a spring, and now you've got a bobblehead. Thanks, bye.